Again, it's uh, Zippy Autos again, uh, trying to keep you guys on the road. Um, keep on getting a lot of questions. Um, when I put on the video previously about how to do the CHT, you have to remove it, um, previous video, um, rather than just connecting everything, taking off belts, pulleys, etc. I worked out a way of doing it, turned, uh, making a little tool using a 50mm spanner. Keep on getting asked, how did I know that it was faulty? Okay, so I'm going to show you how I know it was faulty. And you can do it one or two ways. We can either do it with um, a cheap scanner um, or we can do it using a multimeter. That's kind of the only real ways you can do it. All right, and I shall show you. So we've taken the cover off, all right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to look for the little gray connector, and here it is here, just down there, all right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just remove this from the thing. It's got a little bit of a funny clip underneath it, and they're a pain in the butt. But if you just grab onto it, fully so on the back there and on the front there and then just give it a little bit of force they do eventually just clip out okay and then they lift up and you do need a little bit of force all right now this is what i'm doing there you go and that what then what we need to do is we need to press the button here see that button down there try and zoom on it for you there you go um, and we need to press that while we then lift this out here. I've loosened it already, so it should, in theory, come apart, which it has, which is great. Okay, we don't need this one, tuck that one out of the way. What we need is this one here, all right? And what we're looking at is these two pins here, these two pins here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probe them and um, with the multimeter, and we're gonna do a resistance test and see what resistance we're getting from it. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, I've put the, the probes into the connector there. Okay, so if you can see that better that way. So I'll put one in one side, one on the other side. It doesn't matter which side they go, all right, because they're still just going to give the resistance. So you're pushing a bit of energy through and then getting some resistance back. And then what you need to do is on your multimeter, if you've got multimeter, is Put it on 200k, that's one I found worked better, and it's given me a resistance of 39. If we turn it the other way to 20, it goes to uh, open circuit, so that's no good to us. Again, no good to us. So turn it until we go back to 200k, and that's 38 point, okay, 39, it's changed its mind. So it's 39 um, kilo ohms. Okay, and okay, so to prove that it is 39 kilo ohms, I've gone, I've put on another one, um, another of my testers, and it clearly says they're kilo ohms, if you can see that. I'll keep it nice and. Right, so before we uh, do anything about going inside and looking at the scanner, obviously we have to connect it back up again and then just slide it in on the uh, little clip underneath. Okay, so give it, push it, go into here a click and then just slide it in on its little hanger holder. <laughs> it says, I thought I had it, but it's not on it. There you go, definitely little click there, wasn't it? Don't know if you actually saw because my hand was in the way. Right, so then we're going to go inside and we're going to use a little bit of cheaper scanner that I've got to show you that uh, it can be done even if you've got a cheap scanner. Okay. 
Okay, so we're inside the car now, <clears throat> and the first thing we need to do is establish where the DTC socket is, all right, the EBOD socket. And I know for a fact it's here on the Jag and on the Mondeo. So the steering wheel's there, down to the right, down there, and it's on there, okay? So we're just going to pop this on onto the socket, which is never easy. So it goes one way. If it doesn't fit one way, then turn it around and uh, put it on the other way. <laughs> okay, I think I had it right the way around before. Okay, so then when you um, you've, you've, you put it in, then even with the ignition off, it should power up your device. All right, um, and then what we're going to be doing is we turn on the uh, ignition. So the lights come on. Okay. And then we'll go back down to the scanner, <coughs> and we're going to say yes, we want to test, It'll run through the thing, close found, that's all good, nothing there, oh, sorry, just want to get the focus, okay, then we we'll scroll down to data stream, alright, so yes please, Okay, and then what we're looking for is the ET, ETC, yeah. and there it is, and that's saying that it's 18 at this moment in time. All right, I don't know if you can see that because of the sun. Sorry, I didn't realise the sun was uh, in the way. So there it is. It says 18. Guess it's sun. There we go. All right, so what we're going to do then is uh, run the engine up and you should see that increasing um, as the engine's going up. You should then see that increasing. If it increases, then we n and then you look at your gauge and it's increasing with your gauge, then you should know that your cylinder head uh, temperature sensor is working absolutely fine. Okay, so that's two ways of doing it, using a uh, scanner or using a multimeter. I mean, the other way, <laughs> where you don't really want to be doing that, is uh, taking it out, putting it in hot water with a multimeter again, and then putting it with cold water, but then that's pointless. You might as well just use the engine to do that for you. Okay, so um, I hope this has been useful and helpful with people who have been asking this question. How do you test the CHD? Um, and uh, if you like what I've told you and you're happy with the results, then please... Uh, beep that horn, even though I haven't got a horn, but I quite like the head beep that horn. Um, Scott's got to ring that bell, I've got a beep that horn. Um, and subscribe to Zippy Autos. Okay, thank you very much. Take care now. Safe motoring. Bye-bye.